What's up? What's up, motherfucker? Brother Brian in the motherfucking garage, man. Yo. It's the American One Finger Salute for all you motherfuckers. Peace to you guys that can't handle the One Finger Salute. And for all you other motherfuckers, fucking rock on, bitches. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, look at here. It's coming. Mmm. 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 Fishing season is coming. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing today, man? How are you doing, motherfucking, today? Oh, shit. I said motherfucking shit. Motherfucking shit. Fucking the algorithm up, man. The algorithm is going to get fucked. <laughs> oh, my God. Life, man. Life. You know, it just cracks me up, man, as if a word, man. It just kills me, man. It's just, you know, you could, you could fucking do all kinds of things in the world, man, but don't use bad language. What the fuck is that all about, man? This is, it just doesn't make sense, man. They ought to teach this shit in school. Then there is no more bad language. It's just called language, man. So I did watch the... Uh, what do they call that? When the president addresses uh, State of the Union. Oh, yeah, I watched the State of the Union. I didn't watch it. I haven't watched it in a few years. And, uh, yeah, I watched it this week, and it was actually pretty entertaining, man. I, he actually had me chuckling and laughing a little bit a couple times. You know, he's, you know, <laughs> Joe, Joe reminds me of, I was sitting there watching, I was thinking, this guy reminds me of my stepfather, man. He reminds me of my stepdad. I mean, he is, like, my stepdad had that personality, so. Maybe that's kind of why I like him. I'm not really, I don't get sucked into the politics. Like some of you, some of you people just get sucked into the politics. And I understand, man. It's just, you're passionate and you care about the country. I get it, man. But this is, this is, this is face reality, man. These fucking a politician is not going to fix the problems of the world. None of them, man. Not Donald Trump, not Joe Biden. These fucking people are crooks, man. And uh, I think if there's a politician that's going to fix our country or it's going to do the, the honest and right thing, he's not in the White House right now. It's a younger generation coming up because these fucking old, you know, getting plastic surgery at 80 years old bullshit, man. Fuck these motherfuckers. They only care about themselves, their own egos, man. These... They're a lost cause, man, all of them. All of them. I don't care if there's an R by their name or a D. These motherfuckers are all a lost cause. So I don't let it bother me. Like some of you guys think you let it bother you. It doesn't bother me. You know, in my life, I'm doing as, as well now as I was you know, a few years ago, you know, I'm not digressing because of the uh, inflation. I'm not digressing because of the border. I'm not digressing because of the the, the moral fucking, you know, the morality is just fucking horrible in this country, man. And uh, I'm not digressing, man. You know, matter of fact, I actually made, I brought home my biggest check this week. On a 40-hour work week, you know, because I do get paid by the hour. And I brought home my biggest check in my life this week. So, you know, I'm not doing bad. I'm doing better. I'm, do I'm progressively doing better. And it's mainly because I, I, I take care of myself. You know what I'm saying? I, I take care of I do the things that I need to do to take care of myself. And that's the way it should be. You know, we shouldn't depend on a fucking politician or a governmental system to fucking take care of us. Now, if you're old and, and you need help and assistance, I understand that, man, okay? I under, I, I get it. You know, you got to do what you got to do. 
but I don't have to do that right now. So, you know, I think it'd be nice. It's like if I got old enough that my children were financially stable enough to take care of my old ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the way he said, we just put people in a fucking, in a room, put them in, take them to the home and put them in a room and have a nurse change their fucking diaper every day. It's kind of shit, you know, it's just fucking sad. Anyway, I went to the record store today and I picked up a couple records and I was wanting to kind of share that with you. I'm getting excited. It was snowing this morning, man. It's cold. The wind is blowing like crazy. Um, I was sitting out here in the garage last night, and I heard some sonic booms, man. It was like, boom! You know, the whole garage was shaking. And it did it three times, and then I heard like an Air Force One, or it, it may not have been an Air Force One, but I'm just saying it was like a giant plane, because I live right by the airport. Giant plane, man, that was shaking the whole neighborhood. Big military, and then I found out today that they're doing military exercises because I live next, you know, the, the airport's over here, the uh, the air base, Air Force base is over there, so I'm kind of in between them. It, but he landed over there, one of them landed over there. Mm -mm -mm. So I picked up some records today. And I, I'll show you this one first. I picked up this Chick Corea album, man. Another, yet another Chick Corea album. Chick Corea and the Acoustic Band with John Patitucci and Dave Weckl. Live, man. And I was looking, th I was looking through the Chick Coreas and the energy... The energy from this cover, man, I was like, wow, that looks like that's an interesting concert. And then it's got this great picture on the back of Chick Corea. The energy for this just, it just seemed right, man. So I was like, you know, it was, it was $42, but it's three LPs, okay? It's three, three, it's a three LP set. I'm gonna, I haven't opened it yet. I haven't listened to it. I know I'm going to like it. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm going to like it. I'm a, I'm a big Chick Corea fan. So, got me a knife cutter here. We're going to, I'm going to cut this thing open and let's look at it here. If you, if you want to look, I, I'm assuming you're probably more interested in records than anything else I'm saying. And I've got a bunch of records this week. I picked up quite a few, quite a few good records. And quite a few you probably won't like. Get your ass out of here. Dear Daisy. She's in here hanging out with me. But this is a, a nice tri it looks like a trifold. Yes, yeah, a trifold, gatefold, beautiful. If this is your thing, man. I'm you know, not a lot of people like Chick Korea, but a whole lot of people do, you know. And uh See if I can get this here. But man, look at you got Chick Corea on the piano. Here's the cats, all three of them there. Let's see who else is on this, man. Wow, oh, this is the producers. Yeah, it's just them three. It's a trio. It's a trio album. It's a trio. There you go. It's a trio album. One, two, three. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful gateful, man. Beautiful. Uh, I'm excited. I've just been in, so I've been spending a lot of this. A lot of this stuff. This is on it says Concord Jazz label. Black wax with the red label. Kind of looks like the Columbia, but it's not Columbia. I'm assuming that it's a 33. I'm not sure. I think it's a 33. It's probably a 33 to thirds uh, speed. But yeah, I picked that up this week, man. Beautiful, beautiful album. This is probably this is probably right up there with the best album that I picked up this week. 
then I picked up this is a 1967 copy of of Moby Grape. This is on this is on the Columbia label. This is an original 67 copy. It says that it's in G condition, which for a lot of you that might be a problem, but for me that's that's not a problem. Then I picked this up. This is a, a 1970, 1977 Johnny Cash. This is on the Sun. The Sun label. It says it's a, uh, it's like a original Johnny Cash. I bought it because the songs on it. Um. The songs on this is why I bought it. Home of the Blues is one of them. Come in, Strangers. The Ways of a Woman in Love. You're the Nearest Thing to Heaven. Goodbye, Little Darling. Blue Train. And then he's got Bored to Lose. So he's got a, a nice track list on this album. That's, that's why I bought it. I bought this because it's on the Sun label and it has a nice track list. But it's a 70s, okay? It's a 70s album, and it's colored for 70s, which is probably a little bit, a little bit more rare for 1977. But that's that's not why I picked it up. Even though that it is cool that it's on colored vinyl. I love Johnny Cash. He he does have a fucking killer voice, man. It's kind of got you know if you're into the blues thing, you know. And then I picked this up. Um, Chet Atkins, the Guitar Genius, man. And this is a uh, VG. I paid $3 for it. This is a 1963 mono. 1963 mono. So, <laughs> you know this thing's going to sound fantastic. I mean, you want to talk about analog. This is analog. And it's in good shape. I mean, a lot of these records, you've, you know, a lot of times you see these records out there, but they're not in very good shape. This, this record, this record's in pretty damn good shape. And then I picked up, let me open this one. This was, uh, this was sold it cheap. This was a little bit cheap, but, um, it's a box. It's Mark Kozilek, right? And it's the White Christmas and Little Drummer Boy live, okay? So what, 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 initially when I see this, I was like, Little Drummer Boy, and, you know, and I was like, you know, it just immediately turned me off. I was like, I don't want I don't want no Mark Kozilek Christmas album, right? And then I was looking at the track list and it's it's got a pretty extensive track list here and I, it looks like two of the songs are only Christmas songs all the other one you know Morristown until um, Unlit Hallway Dooku Moon and these are all live a live album and and if you're not familiar with uh, Bart Kozilet he is Sun Kill Moon basically this is a, a solo project from Sun Kill Moon it has tiny cities on it. Dragonflies. It does have White Christmas right here. White Christmas Live. Salvador Sanchez. That's a great tune. But yeah, I ended up getting this. It said VG condition, but it was like 30 bucks for this box set. And uh it was just odd. It was just odd. It was that to me that's awful cheap. That's cheap. You get basically it's four albums in here. In this box set, and I'm not gonna pull them out, but I'm just—it's a box set, four albums. Mark Kozilek, very nice track list. It does have a little whammo at the front here. I don't care. I don't give a shit about unless it goes through to one of the records, which I hope it doesn't. But I picked that up this week, and uh, I think I have—I don't know. I don't. I may not have this album. But it, it was uh, it was three dollars, so I would have had picked it up. It was three bucks. 
And uh, <laughs> this is Ricky Skaggs of 1983. He's just pimped out into 1983. Um, don't cheat in our hometown. I mean, <laughs> it's just fucking horrible. This is your typical horrible country. But, uh, but yeah, it's Ricky Skaggs. He's fucking, he's fucking great, man. Ricky Skaggs is fucking awesome. So, I was like, you know, three bucks. It's definitely coming home. It's in VG Plus, so it's probably like mint. You know, if they, if, if Omega put VG Plus, it's probably mint. Then the Buddy Rich Big Band. Man. I like big band music. And I like Buddy Rich. <laughs> um, this is on Pacific Jazz. I believe that this is a this is a gatefold. Yes, this is a gatefold live concert he did. Um, doesn't have any information on it. It says uh, live at the Chez Hollywood in California, man. And man, look at Buddy Rich there, man. Look at him beat them fucking drums, man. You know this is going to be good. You know that this is going to be a good one, man. I like big band music. I know that, you know, I'm a big Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. And it knows I like that stuff, man. I'm into it. Now, the next one is this album here. And this is Shenandoah. The road not take it, man. And it's still got the shrink wrap, still got the hype sticker. You know. This album, look at the price. This album was 40 bucks. This is a very, um, I think a very rare album. But it's a fantastic country album. Uh. Two Dozen Roses. You guys have all heard that song. The Church on the Cumberland Road. Let me pull it out. We'll look at it. I haven't, I haven't pulled it out yet. So a beautiful minty Columbia. Beautiful, beautiful copy. And I think at one point I was going to buy this album, okay? And the price turns me off, okay? Because this is this is always a, an expensive album. I can't remember if one of, the, one of the artists died or whatever, but I was going to buy it. And I seen it today and I was like, you know what? Got the fucking money this week. I'm gonna buy the motherfucker. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's just kind of a, a kind of a, probably kind of a grill for some people. Not for me. It's not a grill for me. But it's a damn good country album, man. It from front to back. My generation, you know, I'm all over it. And then I've got some. Uh, some J.D. Crow. The Kentucky Country... The the Kentucky Mountain Boys. <laughs> you know, that's kind of a spinoff of a Ralph Staley. You know, Ralph Staley and the, and the uh, Mountain Boys. But this is called Rambler Boy. It's an old album. This is a 1973. It's your typical, probably bluegrassy country. J.D. Crow. If you're into bluegrass, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, man. If you're into bluegrass, you know what I'm talking about. It says the uh, King Bluegrass Bluegrass Records, man. King Bluegrass Records. It's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful copy. So, that's what I got for you. That's what I got for you. Some nice, nice records this week. I haven't listened to none of these yet. I'm going to probably spend some tonight. But I've been busy. Had to go to the grocery store. Had to get a haircut. <laughs> Fucking haircut. 
and uh, yeah, yada yada yada. Picked up some some fishing supplies today. If you're wondering what this is, this is some of my fishing supplies, and most of this probably not the cans. There's a 16 cans of cord there. Those cans of cord probably won't last long, but those that. Cereal will probably last. I like that's what I like to use is some cornflakes, and I like to buy my cornflakes in bulk like that because a lot of times if you go fishing, you say, "Hey, I want to go fishing this week," and then you go to the store, and then guess what? The store ain't got you what you need. So it's like I should have just bought it in bulk. It's two dollars a box at Kroger's. It ain't that expensive. So it's like, why the hell don't you just buy a fucking bunch of it? Throw it in the fucking garage and forget about it. I got another box sitting over here that's open. And, uh, yeah, that way I got it, man. I try to stock up on that stuff. I got a place over here that I store it. And then I got it all year. And then when I run, get close, get down, which that'll probably last all year, that cornflakes. But if I start getting low, I'll buy a couple more boxes. That's all I got for you, people. Hey, thank you guys for hanging out with me, man. And, uh, and I hope you guys are doing good. Brother Brian's doing good, man. I'm out of here.